anything. So the first bill is going to be uh, House Bill 553, Delegate Stewart. Uh, second bill is going to be House Bill 406, Delegate Layman. Right. House Bill 553, Delegate Stewart, you're up. All right. Well, so let me, let me make a little bit of an explanation as to why this bill is going first. Uh, I think it was either last year or two years ago, can't remember which year, I had to, um, I had to cancel a public uh, hearing because of an ice storm, and it was this bill that got canceled. So I was determined to make it up to you by doing this bill first. So We appreciate that, Mr. Chairman. That's right, and Apparently I let me never apologize again for the ice storm. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Vice Chairman, members of the committee, uh, for the record, I'm Delegate Vaughn Stewart, here to testify in favor of HB 553, which is a pretty simple bill. It bans coal tar sealants in the state of Maryland. We heard this bill last year from Delegate Lafferty, uh, but for a refresher, coal tar sealant is used to make driveways and uh, parking lots look shiny. Unfortunately, the weight of all available academic research suggests that it is a carcinogen, and it's not only harmful to our natural environment, but is extremely toxic to human health. Now, the opponents will get up here in a minute, and they will try to muddy the waters about the available scientific research. Do not let them do so. Their research that they're going to cite is overwhelmingly funded by themselves, industry-funded research. But when you look at actual independent scientific studies here, um, it's obvious that coal tar contains what's called PAHs, which are extremely harmful and they give people cancer. So this is a really personal topic for me. I just want to have to say, take a moment to say that I grew up in a town that was devastated by Monsanto. I've had cancer twice before the age of 30. And so the issue of weighing human health and children's health versus Prof, corporate profits is something that hits really deep and really personal for me. And so I'm going to eventually, I'm going to pass it off to the incredibly talented, incredibly brilliant group from Burley Manor Middle School in Howard County. This is a group of seventh graders who have been working on this issue now for two years. And these, these folks are not up here for props or so that I can show that I care about children or whatever. <laughs> they, they are the brains behind this operation. They, they gave the bill to me. And so they're going to tell you why we absolutely have to ban coal tar this year in Maryland, as has been done in multiple jurisdictions across Maryland and in multiple states dating back more than a decade ago. This action is long overdue. No Marylander, especially children, should be uh, coming into contact with this substance, which is extremely toxic. And now I'd like the brilliant students at Burley Manor Middle to take it away and right. tell you all why we should all be issuing, uh, issuing a favorable report on House Bill 55. Hello, my name is Sophia Viserek, and I'm part of the Burley Manor Middle School Safer Sealants team. We're testifying before you today to teach you the dangers of coal tar sealants, and we hope you can help us make Maryland, Maryland a safer and healthier state. So that's a picture of our team. We're the team responsible for the 0.1% pH ban in Howard County, and we've been working on this project since fifth grade. So what exactly are coal tar sealants? Well, adding on to um, Delegate Juan Stewart, um, coal tar sealants are a sealer for your driveways, blacktops, and parking lots, and they contain a very dangerous chemical called PAHs. Society, through marketing, has taught us that driveways should look like the picture and have a flawless and perfect and aesthetic clean finish. However, they have not taught us about the environmental and health dangers connected to these perfect driveways. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons are the harmful chemicals in coal tar sealants. They can cause rashes, skin irritations, cancers, mutations, birth defects, and even death. They're also very toxic to aquatic animals, including fish and aquatic invertebrates. In the picture, you can see five pHs. They're all included in coal tar and all very dangerous. You might be wondering, how exactly can pHs cause cancer? Well, when pHs are taken into the body, they go directly into the liver. Inside the liver, the following reaction takes place. In the picture of the carbon atoms of benzopyrene, the circled area represents a place where an oxygen atom would get added and create what is called an ether. Ethers are highly unstable by naturally with DNA and damage the DNA, <coughs> causing cancer. The combination of UV rays and pHs is, is a toxic one. When pHs come in contact with UV rays, they can be even more harmful. In the two pictures, you can see two people applying coal tar to driveways. You can also see how they're not completely covering their skin and that they're in the sun significantly raising their chances of getting affected by pHs. Thank you.
Um, hi, my name is Fabin, and these are the ways that coal tar can travel through our environment. Adhesion is when coal, someone drives over coal tar and takes coal tar with them. Somewhere else, the coal tar can fall off. Tracking is when someone steps into coal tar and still has the coal tar on his or her shoe. Inside a building, the coal tar can fall off. The wind can take loose coal tar particles from the road and locate it somewhere else. Runoff is when rain, rainfall takes loose coal tar particles and pollutes into a nearby river. Inside the river, the, the coal tar can pollute the aquatic wildlife inside. Houses adjacent to coal tar hill parking lots contain concentrations of PAHs 25 times higher than houses adjacent to asphalt hill parking lots. Since children crawl and play on the floors a lot, they put their fingers in the mouth, so they have a higher chance of being affected by PAHs. Household dust with PAHs leads to an elevated cancer risk for children. Benzoapyrene, benzene, coal tar, and coal tar pitch are all classified as known carcinogens by numerous health agencies. The International Agency for Research on Cancer and the World Health Organization consider PHs as a group one carcinogen, which means it's carcinogenic humans. The National Toxicology Program considers PHs as known to cause cancer. The Environmental Protection Agency consider PHs as the group A carcinogen, which also means it's carcinogenic humans. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention consider PHs as an occupational carcinogen. These key health agencies below have found that exposure to PAHs increases the risk of skin, lung, kidney, bladder, and stomach cancers in both humans and animals. Thank you. Hello, I'm Melanie Britter, and a 2012 study was conducted on 164 randomly selected healthy pregnant women. They concluded that pH exposure is associated with changing DNA segments white blood cells, and genes in the umbilical cords of their participants. The study also showed that PAHs can cross the placenta and fetal blood-brain barrier, triggering inflammation that is toxic to the developing brain. The inflammation caused by coal tar can lower IQs. This case is about how the coal gasification process produces coal tar as a byproduct. At a gas plant in Taylorville, Illinois, 50,000 of gallons of coal tar was buried in secrecy. Construction at this site disturbed the coal tar, contaminating the local water supply and air. A jury awarded $3.2 million to families of four children stricken with neuroblastoma, a rare childhood cancer that resulted from their exposure to coal tar. They were later diagnosed with, they were later diagnosed with neural cancer, which also resulted from their exposure to coal tar, according to court records. This is a chart of pHs in urban sources. As you can see, milligrams per kilograms of coal tar-based sealants are about 1,400 times higher than asphalt-based sealants. Also, coal tar is about 16 times higher than used motor oil. Coal tar contains 16 pHs that are classified as a U.S. Environmental Protection Agency priority pollutants. When benthic organisms are exposed to large amount of pHs, they can experience problems such as loss of consciousness, inability, inability to reproduce, and death. This can disrupt entire food chains. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Jennifer Littlefield. And as you can see on this slide, varying levels of exposure to pHs from sealants are toxic to human and aquatic health, acutely toxic to fathead minnows and water fleas, and may be linked to tumors in brown bullhead catfish in the Anacosta and Potomac rivers. Fish embryos that are exposed to low amounts of pHs can develop eyes with shorter retinas and smaller lenses, misshaped harps, and abnormal heartbeats. Wind, runoff, and especially snowplows can move pH-contaminated pavement dust into nearby soil. pH concentrations can range from 2.5 three to 14 times higher in soils adjacent to seal-coated pavement than unseal-coated pavement. Elevated levels of pHs can be found for up to three years after the seal coat is applied. A 2013 Minnesota Pollution Control Agency sediment study found that coal tar sealants contributed to 67% of total pHs in 15 metro area stormwater ponds. Research conducted by these four organizations show that Coal tar based sealants are a significant source of pHs to urban waterways. 
cities must maintain stormwater ponds by dredging them. And if the dredged in, and if the pH concentration in the dredged material is high enough, disposal can be very costly in the hundreds of millions of dollars statewide. Studies by the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency show that the decrease in use of coal tar products will greatly reduce the cleanup costs. In 1990, it costed $12 million to clean up the contaminated stormwater in Minnesota due to elevated levels of pHs. Thank you. I want all the members of the committee to witness the high level of organization and discipline and try to replicate this for your bills. Okay, who would like to go next? Um, I would like to go next. Hi, I'm Claire, and we looked through many safety data sheets that seal coating companies provided on their websites. Many of these safety data sheets say that the sealants contain hazardous PAHs that are known carcinogens. GemSeal is a company that manufactures coal tar, and their safety data sheet states that their coal tar is classified as a Category 1A carcinogen and that it may cause allergic reactions, genetic defects, fertility damage, organ damage, and reproductive effects. But the good news is, we don't have to use coal tar. There are many other alternatives, such as latex and asphalt-based sealers, that are easy to get and priced about the same as coal tar. Big stores like Home Depot and Lowe's have already stopped selling coal tar, and that means that other businesses can too. Shown here are four driveways. One isn't sealed, one is sealed with coal tar, one with a latex-based sealer, and one with an asphalt-based sealer. All three sealed driveways look very nice. All three sealants look about the same, cost about the same, and last about the same time, but coal tar is very harmful to human and aquatic health. Al Inns is a Minnesota state official who's running an EPA-funded program to reduce the use of coal tar sealants. He held webinars throughout the Great Lakes region last summer to educate business ab businesses about how to shift asphalt products. He said that there are few applications for which asphalt sealants won't work well. Lonnie Harris is the president of West Suburban Asphalt and Concrete. In an article from the Sheboygan Press, he said that he applied coal tar to parking lots for years and got second degree burns on his neck from carrying an applicator hose around his shoulders. He said that he got lightheaded and had panic attacks, which would go away during his work's off season. He says that he now only uses asphalt-based products and feels better. Thank you. Hi, I am Rhea. In an article from the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, Nick Kelso, owner of Minnesota-based Jetback International, said that his company phased out the usage of coal tar sealants in 2012. He now uses asphalt-based sealants, which he says aren't as smelly after application and don't burn a worker's skin upon contact. He also says that he doesn't see much of a difference in performance. Next, I will be talking about some of the claims that our opponents made. On February 20th, 2019, there was a hearing conducted to decide whether or not to ban coal tar in Maryland. In this hearing, our opponents made several claims against us. They testified that coal tar is deemed safe for workers, has minimal to no health effects, and is classified as safe and effective by the Food and Drug Administration. However, throughout our research, we found that there are many... <laughs> We found that coal tar can, is dangerous to humans and aquatic life and can cause skin, lung, kidney, bladder, and stomach cancers. They also testified that coal tar is utilized in several household products, such as shampoo and soap, and, which are, and is used for many common skin condition treatments directly on the skin. However, Health Canada says that coal tar dye found inside many of these products is no longer made from coal tar, but is rather made synthetically as coal tar was proven dangerous for the skin. The, one of our opponents at the hearing said that the only alternative for coal tar was epoxy seal coaters and that they were four times more expensive than coal tar. However, throughout our research, we found that there are many alternatives to coal tar, which are also priced about the same, like asphalt-based sealants and latex-based sealants. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cindy. Uh, no. 
Our opponents have also stated that coal tar sealants have no correlation to cancer in human and aquatic life. However, the U.S. EPA states that coal tar sealants contain up to 35% refined coal tar, which is made up of 50% pHs by mass. As stated before, according to key health agencies, pHs are carcinogens that are known to be toxic to human and aquatic life. The CEO of Seaboard Asphalt stated that if we were to ban coal tar sealants, they would lose 30% of their company, which would, de which would be devastating to local businesses. However, many people and many Silco application companies have already stopped using coal tar sealants. For example, in Howard County, 90% 90, 90 of the Silco application companies that we had contacted had already stopped using coal tar sealants prior to the ban in the county. Additionally, many major coal tar sealant manufacturers Many major coal tar sealant manufacturers already have the know-how and the equipment to make these safer sealers. A scientist for a coal tar manufacturing company stated that coal tar can help the Chesapeake Bay because pHs are the building blocks of life because they are made of hydrocarbons and are thus made of water and carbons. A quick Google search will show you that hydrocarbons are not actually made of water and carbons, but hydrogen and carbons. This shows that our opponents are extremely misinformed at best and misleading at worst. <laughs> PHs actually harm the environment, especially bottom dwellers, which are the building blocks of the freshwater food chain. She also stated that Coulter coats the roadway for stormwater and sewage treatment, which would help slow down the deterioration of the infrastructures. However, they are missing that even though coal tar may cover the infrastructure of the roads, they will wear the, they will wear the coal bits of coal tar off, which will eventually wash up into the Chesapeake Bay, which will wreak havoc on its ecosystem. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mimi, and... House Bill 553, sponsored by Delegate Stewart from Montgomery County, calls for a ban on coal tar products with a 0.1% pH limit. Why is this limit necessary? Allow me to explain. This prevents people from using ECR and other products as a loophole, which prevents sealants from harming the environment. But what is ECR? ECR is a new, dangerous sealant on the market, which also contains toxic pHs. If we do not include a 0.1% pH limit in our ban, this would exclude ECR and other products from the ban, potentially allowing them to harm our environment. However, if we do include the limit, it would prevent ECR and other products similar to it from reaching the market in Maryland. Products are currently available with pH concentrations well below the 0.1% limit. For example, the asphalt-based average is 0.005%. The European Union classifies road waste with 0.1% pHs as high or higher as hazardous road waste. This means that if it's above this limit, it could be really, really harmful to the people and the environment around it. Coal tar has already been banned in various states, counties, and even major department stores, as Claire said before. These states include Minnesota, Wisconsin, Maine, and Washington. The District of Columbia also has a ban in place. Bans in other local areas include Montgomery County, Prince George's County, Anne Arundel County, and Howard County, which we help ban. Because of bans in four Maryland counties, about 45% of all Maryland residents are now under a coal tar ban. So why don't we just ban it in the whole state? We hope you will support the bill in order to improve the health of Maryland residents as well as its aquatic life and protect our Chesapeake Bay. Let us join the 22.6 million Americans who are now under a coal tar ban. Thank you for your time. Uh, I apparently have other people who are signed up to testify as well. So you can take questions now, Mr. Chair, because obviously we have the experts here. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, my only question was where has it been banned in the state of Maryland, and they've already given us that information. But it looks like we have a couple of questions. Delegate Terraza, you had the first question. Well, I know this has to be a question. So first I want to thank you guys very much. I represent parts of Howard County. But so since it has to be a question, did you know that I was on the county council when students from Burley Manor came and convinced us that it was necessary? So thank you for getting us to do the, car, the toll coal tar ban in Howard County first, and thank you for coming here to make us do it statewide. Thank you. Okay.